Tom, what attracted you to your department, your college, or Virginia Tech? Yeah, Nicolene, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to talk with you here this afternoon. It's a great question. And I think the first and foremost aspect of what attracted me to Virginia Tech in the department uh, was Professor Bill Herbert. So he was one of the leading voices in cardiovascular physiology uh, at the time. Uh, the opportunity to not only get a well-rounded uh, formal education in, in uh, cardiovascular response or to exercise and its implications uh, in cardiovascular disease, there was also an opportunity, which was a very rare opportunity at the time, uh, to get a formal training in the molecular sciences. And so integrating all of that together propelled me into a very, very high profile first postdoctoral fellowship with Mike Simon's group. And Mike is the founding director of cardiovascular medicine at the Yale University um, Medical School. And we are still publishing together. So it just, I, I can't say enough about the opportunity that uh, Professor Bill Herbert gave me uh, there at Virginia Tech so many years ago now. Yes, he's well known and loved by many, many Hokies. <laughs> yes. Yep. What has been a highlight of your career thus far and what factors contributed to your success? Yeah, well, I think the, the factors that have contributed to the success was that that, that well-rounded um, education that I received at Virginia Tech. And so uh, there are a number of things that have occurred here just very recently. In 2019, we were able to reverse atherosclerosis. Now, albeit in mice, uh, we were able to actually reverse one of the number one killers in the world. 2020, uh, we were able to reverse aortic aneurysm, which is another big cardiovascular uh, disease uh, associates with a great deal of morbidity and mortality uh, around the world. And then this year, we're very, very excited. Uh, we think we have a new mechanism of action. So all of the artificial intelligence and machine learning that we are applying to the biomedical sciences, we believe that we have uncovered a very complex disease etiology for COVID-19. This year, we've been able to actually inhibit viral uptake uh, and viral replication in human lung epithelial cells. And so we are very, very excited uh, about the, the research that we are embarking on in this area. Thank you. If you could do one thing differently during your time at Virginia Tech, what would it be and why? Yeah, good question. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I feel like I took, you know, real advantage of the opportunity that I had at Virginia Tech, but if I could wind the clock back, uh, I think I would have attended more football games. So there in early 2000s, um, you know, we went to the national uh, football championship and looking back at it now, I wish I would have spent a little bit more time there in Lane Stadium uh, while I was there. What is it about your profession that you value the most, Tom? Another great question. Um, I think what I value most about the work that I'm doing right now is it affords the opportunity to think outside the box. We are developing what we believe to be the single most transformative technology in human history, which is artificial intelligence. And we are applying it uh, to address one of the most complex systems in the known universe, which is human biology. Now, most cognitive scientists will argue the fact that that's human cognition. And I like to gently point out that that is human biology. And what we've shown over the last couple of years is that the AI the machine learning actually capable of driving causal dependency structures that are reflective of the signal transduction cascades that occur in the cell that drive cellular behavior and dictate phenotype. And so it's just a very, very exciting time uh, to be in this field. And how has your experience at Virginia Tech um, help you to pursue your professional goals and your personal goals? Yeah, again, it, Virginia Tech is such a, um, 
you know, a recognized, uh, respected university around the world. My second doctorate was at the University of Oxford, and I had a numerous feedback from professors there at Oxford while I was working on a, a, a second PhD in computational statistics about the well-rounded training that I had received in not only cardiovascular physiology, but the molecular sciences. And I was afforded the opportunity while at Oxford to integrate all of that underlying biological knowledge into some of the uh, techniques that we're using, the in silico techniques that we're using now. And so it, it, it has been a real shot in the arm uh, for not only my career, but uh, training individuals or the next generation behind me as a way of thinking, not only as a computational statistician, but as a biologist and how do you integrate all of that uh, together. So it's just, it's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you. How does the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences continue to impact you and your profession, Tom? Yeah, and I think that's along the lines of this last question. So I hope I don't sound <laughs> redundant here. Um, but the, you know, the, the college, the university, such two well-respected institutions uh, that it has opened a great deal or a number of doors uh, for me along, along the way. And I, I just, I can't say enough about Virginia Tech uh, and, the, and the education that I received while I was there uh, working with uh, Professor Bill Herbert. Wonderful. <laughs> Do you have a favorite memory, experience, or professor? <laughs> I do. Well, I, I've said it a couple times now with, with, with Bill Herbert. I can't say enough uh, about Bill on the opportunity that uh, he gave me. But, you know, in everyone's life, there are defining moments. And I've had a couple. One of them actually occurred in the auditorium in the Fralin uh, Biotechnology Center. Uh, there was a professor uh, from the NIH uh, or an investigator from the NIH that was giving a lecture on systems biology. And at the time he was talking about something that was just absolutely fascinating to me, which was DNA microarray chips. And that has propelled me into what we are actually doing now. We've, we have since moved away from chip-based technology and we're, we're working uh, hard and heavy in next generation sequencing, especially at the single cell level. But that was one of those defining moments for me because I just had a very strong sense that science was going in this direction, especially when you could capture the entire transcriptome in a single assay. That was just absolutely fascinating to me. That's wonderful. So where is your research leading you ultimately? Yeah, and I, I think, you know, we don't have a crystal ball, um, <laughs> but where I think that the artificial intelligence and the machine learning uh, and where this is going. First of all, I need to preface this answer with, I'm a real proponent of dispelling uh, all the hype that currently exists in the artificial intelligence space right now. Talking uh, to some in the field, you think that we had already cured uh, cancer or cardiovascular disease, and that's not the case. But I believe, I, I thoroughly and I'm very convinced that it will lead to the eradication of human disease. And that's what's so exciting about this. Again, 2019, we reversed atherosclerosis, 2020, uh, aortic aneurysm. And now we have a new mechanism of action for COVID-19 that is different than the vaccine approach for the last 80 years in teaching the immune system how to, uh, to address uh, or combat a virus. We're actually blocking a mechanism of action and if, and please forgive me uh, with this, this is my Midwest vernacular here, we're blocking viral uptake uh, and viral replication in human lung epithelial cells. And so what I like to share with folks is that if the virus can't get into the dance, it can't pee in the punch bowl. And that's exactly what the AI uh, has led us to, uh, is that mechanism of action. 